In the book of Genesis, God creates the world and the whole universe and declares it good. That means that anyone, including you, can venture out into creation itself and experience that goodness that comes from nature. You've probably felt it before, the call of the wild, the urge to pack your things and head out into the beautiful world that God has created for you. And if you have an IQ of over 90 and you are at least a somewhat self-aware and somewhat intelligent person, you probably also have that very deep-seated feeling in your gut that something very wrong will happen one day, whether it's, if it's within the next 12 months or the next 12 years or the next 12 decades, well, that remains to be seen. But something will happen, something will kick off. And you don't want the first time that you pull out your gun and put on your gear to be when the world ends. Hopefully, you'll have had some hours hiking, rucking, experiencing things with your weapon and with your gear before that faithful day comes. There is a way to experience nature and to get in some very good training all at the same time. I have termed it an armed expedition on this YouTube channel, but others just simply call it LARPing or just rucking or however you want to call it. Taking your rifle, putting on your gear to some degree and heading out into the beautiful world. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, how exactly do I pull that off without getting in trouble? It's not like you can just put on your gear, find the closest hiking trail in your local city and just go for a walk in a public park. I'm, I'm not saying that you couldn't do that, but it certainly would bring some attention that you probably don't want. And so today I'm gonna go over how exactly you go about doing an armed expedition or a ruck. So let's start off with some of the very first things that you need to know. First of all, there is nothing illegal about putting on your tactical gear and open carrying your rifle on public land, okay? Now, obviously within the bounds of a city or a town, things are probably gonna be very different. But if we're talking about national forest land, Bureau of Land Management land, fish and game land, and even to a limited degree, national park land, there is nothing legally stopping you or legally wrong with doing any of that. So if you are concerned about law enforcement being up your butt because you are dressed like Al Qaeda out in the middle of the desert, uh, understand that 99% of the time it is perfectly legal to do. The second thing that you have to do is look for places where people don't usually go. Now this is gonna take a little bit of research on your part. You're gonna to wanna to break out two things. One is just simply Google Earth. Another is gonna be, I believe it's called ArcGIS, but it's gonna be a public land map. I will have a link to it in the video description. This will show you where you as a US citizen can go anytime you want. The two best kinds of public land for LARPing are going to be Bureau of Land Management land and National Forest land. Bureau of Land Management land is absolutely the most free. There is almost no regulations on Bureau of Land Management land or BLM land. You can practically run around naked shooting your gun in the air and there's really nothing they can do to stop you. Now, this land is generally gonna be more desert climate, although it does run the gamut. There are certainly some forests and lakes and rivers on BLM land, although the vast majority of it is gonna be the desert. The most BLM land in the country is gonna be found in Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, um, some parts of Idaho, California, and Oregon. So if you live in any of those states, you are in luck, you are surrounded by BLM land, even if you don't know it. National forest land is gonna be a little more regulated. You can't shoot your gun within 50 yards of a road or a stream or any kind of body of water or a campsite. But other than that, it's generally very, very free as well. Again, you can LARP in the woods, you can go anywhere you want. There is what is called dispersed camping. So if you wanna do an overnight expedition in the woods, as long as you find a safe spot and you don't burn the forest down and you set up your fire, right? You can kind of just camp wherever you want for up to, I think it's like two or three weeks. So that's pretty great. So National Forest Land is also awesome. If you live in Washington, Montana, Wyoming, uh, Idaho, again, um, you're gonna be surrounded by National Forest Land. Something really important to note though about national forests is that they are very heavily used by a bunch of other hobbies and a bunch of other industries. For example, I live next to two national forests. One of them does not allow any motor vehicles. The other one does. The one that allows motor vehicles all summer is just packed 
with ATVs and dirt bikes and all the other kinds of recreational vehicles that come with that kind of a hobby. So running around and rucking in gear in that area can be a little bit sketchy and a little bit dangerous. Again, you're not doing anything wrong by rucking or LARPing. But if you run across a camp of normies and you're dressed like a member of frickin' SEAL Team 6, there are probably going to be some questions and you might have the cops called. Now again, you can't really be charged with anything, but do you really want to spend your precious weekend LARPing talking to some cop and trying to justify what you're doing, or do you just simply want to enjoy your time in peace? So these are all things to consider when scouting out your public land. You can always go to the public land yourself, kind of get a feel for the area, how often it's used. And you can also look on Google Earth. Do you see a lot of ATV trails? Do you see a lot of campsites? Or is it generally pretty uh, unused and unpopulated? A third thing to consider here, and something that you will realize once you actually start LARPing yourself, is just how few people actually go into true wilderness. Now, what do I mean by that? I think a lot of people, when they say they're into hiking or, or they're into hunting or something like that, they, in the case of a hiker, will just go on a trail that they found on all trails. They're not actually going off trail. They're not going to anywhere that is relatively unknown. They're just going on a place that thousands of people have been on before and tens of thousands of people will follow. Uh, many hunters don't go any further than like 100 yards away from their truck at any given time. Going truly into a relatively unexplored space, it requires cardio, which is something not a lot of Americans have. So if you find a place on Google Earth that is on public land that requires just maybe a 30 or 45 minute hike to get to, there is like a 99.999% chance that you will definitely be the only person in that region. Let me give you an example. In the background footage here, you will see that I am in the sand dunes. Um, this is in southeast Idaho. Now, these sand dunes are very famous for being good for snowmobiling in the winter and being good for dirt biking and side-by-side -side riding in the summer. Now, I'm well aware of this, right? But most of that happens in the southern end of the sand dunes. I decided to go to the very, very northern end where I know there's really no road access and there's really not a lot of people that talk about it anyway. So I knew that if I wanted to explore the sand dunes by myself and have the whole place to myself completely alone, that is where I would go. And what do you know? I go early on a Saturday morning. I take about a 30, 45 minute hike to get to the sand dunes and I have the whole place to myself. It's like being on the surface of Mars and I have the entire place to myself. It is so great. And I was able to get in some very good cardio, get in a little bit of training with the 300 blackout. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Now, just one last thing before I let you guys go. 80% of the United States population lives on the east coast of the United States, east of the Mississippi River. That includes Alaska. So if you're east of the Mississippi or if you're in the American Midwest, I know it can be very, very hard to find any kind of land to actually go on and shoe, let alone LARP and have a little bit of an adventure. It is more crucial for you than anybody else to really come together and form a community. Do you know somebody at your church that would let you camp, quote unquote, on their land and maybe let you shoot some guns? Wink, wink, right? Is there a piece of land that uh, maybe it's not totally public or maybe it's not totally private? It's kind of vague, but everyone knows you can go there and shoot, right? Is there a place like that? Uh, if you live in the Appalachians, how far of a drive are you from Kentucky, which is loaded with public land or Pennsylvania or even parts of Maine? Public land is certainly out there. You just got to look a little harder for it and you got to be willing to commit a little bit of a drive and a little bit of time. So I would encourage you to come together, form a community, meet people who maybe own some private land or know somebody who owns private land. That would be cool with you going on a little bit of a hike, doing a little bit of shooting and a little bit of camping. That is what I would recommend if you live on the East Coast. I, again, I know it can be very, very hard for you guys. Uh, you have a lot of sympathy for me. I also want to leave you guys with one more thing before I go. First of all, I totally acknowledge that this is incredibly weird, right? Especially if you're not into guns at all, if you're not into prepper culture at all. Um, yeah, I understand that this is very strange. Most people in their early to mid 20s like me, uh, they're not doing what I do. They're not getting out early in the morning in, onto public land with their gear on. They're, uh, I don't know, recovering from a hangover or whatever lame 
cultural norm that has been thrusted upon my generation, right? But one day I'm gonna be lying in my bed, hopefully dying of old age, hopefully surrounded by family that I love and people that I love. And I will be lying in the bed that I will die in and that I will return to my maker in. When I am lying there looking back on my life and what I have done, am I gonna miss the weekends that I spent sleeping in and playing video games and I don't know, doing whatever useless crap <laughs> sometimes I catch myself doing? Or am I gonna miss the adventures, the times that I gave in to my instinct to grab my sword and grab my backpack and head out into the wilderness? What am I gonna miss more? What am I gonna reflect on more? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna support the channel, I've got a bunch of affiliate links in the description from all sorts of different gun and outdoor gear manufacturers, so please check them out, and please check out Civilian Expedition Outfitters as well. Have a wonderful rest of your day.